What's a secret you can only share with online strangers? Never told my parents I had stage 1 cancer. Both were barely sober and would have jumped off the wagon head first. Brightside doc got it all. Glad you beat cancer. I know that must have been a hard decision to make, but it was probably for the better to not tell them. Thank you and yeah. My best friend was with me through it. In turn we ended up married, so it ended up a happy story. When I was with my host family it was honestly the only year of my life I felt like a part of a family. I miss them so much. That's really touching. Sometimes we think our family lives are normal until we experience another way. And how I'm sure they miss you too. Just how freaking lonely I am. Of course no one wants to hear it, they blow smoke up your ass, or repeat catchy phrases. I have no friends or anyone I talk to outside of Kaokas. I had a bad breakup last year and pretty much no luck since. I'm in the same boat as you. I've tried dating apps, meetups to no avail. I live by myself with my dog. Now with everything going on, I work from home so have little interaction with anyone. The only people I talk to is my family and Kaokas. I sometimes can't sleep and worry if I'll be alone all my life. I make myself cry to feel better, but it doesn't change anything. I'm lonely and I don't think I'll ever find anyone. The emptiness inside eats at me every day, and I struggle sometimes to even get through the day. I think something is seriously wrong with me. I feel relieved whenever I get sick. I have major depression and anxiety problems, and being physically ill is just something people understand better. I don't know how to explain it. It's like the physical illness justifies the freak feelings. You have a reason to feel bad, to stay in bed, to need people around. It gives you also something else to worry about, something present and real. I have never heard it explained this way, but wow that hit me. It's so relieving to see that someone else has this experience created a throwaway for this because I know of at least one person that knows my username and this can never be discovered about me. When I first started dating my boyfriend, I moved in with him in another state pretty quickly like after 3-4 months. So one night, he was in the shower in our one bedroom one bathroom apartment and I was chilling in the living room and suddenly I had to poop so so bad. Like it was go time, and he was in the shower and I absolutely did not feel comfortable going in there and blowing up the toilet at the same time he was in the shower. In hindsight, I should have just run to the corner store and gone poo and come back with snacks and acted like I just wanted some munches, but I was panicking so what did I do? I grabbed two plastic grocery bags, doubled them up took them into our walk-in closet, I think I figured, if he popped out of the shower in the middle of my shame at least I would be behind another door, and have a minute to compose myself, and I squatted, and pooped a huge load of turd into these grocery bags in our closet. I wiped with paper towels, and tied up the bag and immediately went down, and took out the trash. He will never know. No one will never know. This is my shame. The image of this was, well, spectacular that I honestly don't enjoy life that much anymore. I eat well, I exercise, I do everything that people say to do if you're depressed. It ain't been helping, and anytime I bring it up with someone, they just talk about how good I seem to have it. Makes talking to my girlfriend or my friends really hard, because I seem so upbeat, but honestly there are a lot of days where I'd rather just wake up and go back to sleep. I recently talked W a doctor because I'm supporting someone with depression. Their depression isn't the typical I'm worthless, there's a voice in my head that tells me I'm not good enough, why even bother, I'm so sad or emotionally unstable all the time etc. Their main symptom is an hedonia rack a loss of feelings of pleasure, interest, and motivation. This might be what you have. I asked the doctor if there was a difference in how these two manifestations of depression are treated, and he said yes. It was a very short visit, so I didn't get details, but your girlfriend slash friends slash family probably think you have the more obvious type of depression. Anhedonia sucks but there is still help and options. Currently I'm researching meds. SSRIs seem to help less, since they mainly help people with emotional swings and anxiety. Well but is one medication I've flagged as something that may help. There is a lot of other anti-depression meds that are not SSRIs, that I haven't researched yet. 
Stress also may play a factor in developing anhedonia. I suggest working with a therapist to identify major stressors and how to manage stress levels. Chronic high stress levels can numb you out to the extent that you don't even notice anymore because if you don't feel much of anything, how would you know you feel stressed? And if your memory is affected by chronic fatigue and depression, how would you remember what it felt like to feel anything else? Self-assessment becomes more difficult, that's why it's so important to work with a professional. Go see a doctor. Get the blood work done then get on some treatment plan with meds plus T-H-E-R-A-P-Y. I obsess about being able to start life over in another time. To the point where I feel this life is not worth bothering about. I always thought the coolest thing in the USA is that one day you can get up and decide I'm going to move to this state and you don't even have to tell anybody if you don't want to. Well, except if you're a parent or are in debt. I kind of dislike my best friend. We've known each other a long time and we are both in unfortunate circumstances, but I'm trying to change mine. He isn't trying to change his, he just rages about how unfair his life is. I've offered all the help I can, but he never takes me up on it, and being his shoulder to cry on can be exhausting. He can be a very negative person, and so can I, but I'm trying to be less so, but it's easy to slip back into negativity when I'm around him. It's all very frustrating sometimes. It's okay to break up with a friend. We don't have language or processes for it, like we do for romantic relationships, but we should. I can attest to this. I always remind myself of the quote, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I find this to be true most of the time. I'm inadvertently ruining my marriage because I'm terrified I'm going to ruin it. You should definitely bring this up with your partner and talk about therapy for you. I had a tendency to do this too. You are more than deserving of a good marriage and a happy life. This really helps. My husband and I are getting better at identifying our emotions and triggers and we will say annoying things like, sorry I snapped at you. I was stressed and I didn't want to hear your voice. But that wasn't your fault. It was how I was feeling. And we did this all without therapy. God, we are obnoxious. We still yell at each other. We just break it down later. Now. There is a video of me being interviewed by Tulsa Channel 9 News where I'm wasted wearing a drink soaked crop top tank top oxted shirt being asked about my opinion on drink. Being sold in Boone Pickens Stadium. Not my finest moment. Late response. I honestly have no idea where slash if there is a link of this incident. They might have saved the footage slash stored it somewhere and I dk where to find it. Also it was Tulsa News 9 not Channel 9 News. Another late response, apparently, I can't remember the news station, but I remember a prominent white 9 on a red square background on the mic. Honestly cold being KTUL8, but I was plastered that day, I Tulsa gang. I have no motivation to do anything. I do the same thing every day, so I get bored, but then I can't be bothered to start doing something productive. Struggled with same thing for years. Finally did talk about it, and they found out I have an depression. Now I'm working on myself, and I'm already more productive most of the times. Don't only talk to online strangers about it, but I roll. It's a negative loop that's hard to break. Can you have depression just due to the motivation issue without any emotional issues? I don't feel sad usually, but I'm so unmotivated. I also have ADHD which sometimes ties into depression, but I never thought I had it. About 10 years ago, I stole my bully's phone and threw it off a building. He still doesn't know what happened to his phone. This reminds me of when I was 12 and I hid a kid's bike helmet so he couldn't bike home from school since the school's policy was that old kids were to wear a helmet if they were to ride to and from school. I ended up fessing up to it though sadly and gave him his helmet back after a week. Not much of a secret, but my dad lead about having a family to my mom. My dad is still in the picture, but we are like the secondary family. It took 25 years for me to finally meet one of my brothers from my dad's side. He seems to be the only one who half-heartedly wanted to meet me. The rest don't seem to care too much about my existence. OMG this happened with my best friends growing up, and I only actually found out very recently. My best friend and I are nearly 40, and her sister is about 43. 
It turns out, their father was always an incredibly righteous and judgmental person. But he secretly had a whole other family, right here in our tiny little town, with two daughters, of similar ages, to my friends, Owen grandchildren. And he just came home one day, and dropped that bomb on everyone casually, and then went out to snooker club. That's all I know. I'm shocked. It's obviously hurtful in many ways. His wife is a lovely woman. She accepted it. They all did. And that's for the best. I'm still floored. Are ah, back in the days when one wage supported two families. Don't know how I'm going to survive now without stepdad. Died Saturday. Things just hurt so much. It will get better, but take your time. I felt the same when my mother died, but I'm still here, thanks to everything she taught me. Even after death the people you love stay with you. I wish you lots of strength. I introduced my friend to the medication I'm pretty sure ultimately killed her, but we have no proof. That's dark. She was my best friend which makes it worse. When she passed we'd been friends for 10 years. Everyone knew I introduced her to the prescription drug, but the consensus seems to be that it had nothing to do with her death. It was a stimulant medication for ADHD, and she was diagnosed with brain cancer a few years after she started using it daily. I let her try it once or twice, not knowing she'd seek it out on her own and get addicted to it. I was young and stupid. I've spoken to a few people in the medical field who told me in confidence that the medication probably at least made it worse. I'd give anything to have her back. I created multiple accounts on Reddit to upvote my husband's writing and r slash writing prompts to motivate him to continue to write. This is the most wholesome comment in this thread. Thank you. I do feel a little scummy when I log into the three accounts because I don't like lying to him, but I think he needs the motivation to continue. Since my divorce, I don't really want a relationship. I date some and keep it casual and had one actual girlfriend for 3 months and it was pure hell. My family doesn't get it, but I really like doing the dad and kids thing. I went to counseling in case it was some carryover issues from my marriage, but it seems I just like being on my own. I'm scared that won't change long term, I don't want to end up alone after my kids grow out of the home. But I just can't get on board to doing the relationship bit and don't see that changing anytime soon. Think of it this way. You don't have to conform to the norm. If you're happy by yourself, then be by yourself. If eventually you decide you want to be with other people, be. I do keggles whenever I'm waiting at a stoplight. That's not that embarrassing dude. It's not that it's embarrassing, but I don't tell anyone I know I roll because I don't want them to think about my pussy every time we are driving together and hit a red light. I've cut off all ties with family and friends to be alone for the rest of my life. I've honestly been the happiest I've ever been in my whole life. If you aren't happy with them in your life then they shouldn't be in your life. Yeah so I left my kid at the McDonald's. Sometimes when my medical issues are acting up I can't even remember my husband's name. I know who he is, but it's like the data is corrupted, and my brain is returning unknown error instead of name. Good morning Noel how do you sleep? Due to the current plague, COVID, my best friend of 10 plus years lost his job. He was going through rough times beforehand. Wife cheated, left him, horrible divorce. ETC. Now, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed, and can be forgetful. He, however, is a very proud man, and will not accept help from anybody. Nothing I can do, he's always been that way. Important later. One night while having a few drinks, he mentions how he's worried about making rent next month. Due to my decent savings and good job, I offered to help him. He refused saying he would never accept it. Now, I know his landlord is a vague acquaintance, saw him and had talked to him a few times before, while at my buddy's place. So I went to see him, while my buddy was at another friend's house working on his old dirt bike. I paid his rent in full, in cash, for the next two months. I told his landlord to never tell him it came from me, and to tell him that was owed to him due to overpayment on his rent, while he lived there. Something about reviewing the last few years finances to make it seem legit. He totally bought it. I saw him the next weekend and he was so happy. He told me all about the overpayment and how that magically saved him. For without them, 
he might be homeless. While he thinks he was saved due to an accounting error, I'm so happy knowing I greatly improved his situation, at least for a little while. Wow what an amazing and wholesome story. You are a great friend. He's lucky to have you. That Reddit is also a data collecting site. As credit is essentially a marketing mine. People like sex well. It's not like something they didn't know already. I love the impact the pandemic is having. I'm sad that people are dying, but as someone who was working myself to the bone, or commuting to work, being forced to stop everything, and spend all my time at home gave me so much more time with my family, and doing what I enjoy unemployment is enough, that I can survive so suddenly I'm financially okay, but without a lot of suffering, I'm absolutely dreading, having to go back, and don't think I can without dealing with serious impact to my well-being. My twin girls were born the day before the state shut down. It's been awesome. My husband got to stay home for 4 months with pay because of it, and I got to stay home instead of going back to work 2 weeks after. Best timing ever. I'm glad you got that time with them. It is meant begling to me that you would have to be back at work 2 weeks after giving birth. I had a year mad leave each time, and had a hard time going back. I never graduated college. I paid $200, and ordered a fake degree, and had it sent to my parents house, they totally believed it. I lied to my girlfriend at the time and all my friends. I was already on my 5th year of college with a realistic 1.5 years left. I fricked around a ton in college with a bunch of D's and F's that wouldn't count, and I couldn't handle anymore. I just never went back. I lied to my parents, and told them I was so embarrassed that I was a 5th year student, that I didn't care to go to graduation ceremony. Also all my friends were already gone. They also believed it. It still weighs on my conscious all the time. Whenever people talk about college and ask me, I tell them I went to college, but rarely ever mention graduating, unless they straight up ask me what year I graduated. I lie as a last resort. Looking back I would have died to be able to graduate with all my friends and actually see my parents. Cheer as I walked on stage. If I could go back in time, I would study my ass off and just finish the damn degree. It's not worth me going back to college just to complete my degree. I now run my own business and pull in a six figure salary. Before that I climbed the corporate ladder. The fear of being exposed and being forever defined a college failure motivated me to work my ass off. I wanted to bury that lie so deep in success that nobody dares even bothers to ask me about college. I probably would never be in the position I'm in if I never lied about graduating college.